Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling's Virtual College Fair. We are excited that you're here. Uh, we have a great uh, duo of speakers for you this evening, and they have lots of great information to share with you about life and school and education in Nevada. So um, just a few housekeeping announcements from me before we get started. First, uh, your cameras and microphones are turned off, so don't worry, we can't see you or hear you. Hopefully you can see and hear us okay. If for some reason, and that changes, just send us a message using the Q&A button on your Zoom toolbar, and we'll be happy to help troubleshoot that with you. Um, speaking of the Q&A button, that is your best way to engage with our presenters this evening. So as you have questions throughout the session, feel free to drop those in the Q&A box at any point, uh, starting now, while they're presenting, or after. Um, we'll all be monitoring those throughout the session and are happy to respond um, either throughout or at the very end um, as well. Uh, don't forget there are more sessions being offered after this, so check that StriveScan website where you signed up for any additional sessions you might be interested in, as well as the session recordings um, will be available and posted on that StriveScan website within about a week or so as well. And so with that, I'll just say thank you for being here and turn it over to our presenters. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to start um, this session. This is um, UNLV and UNR, uh, you know, joining efforts here to show you the great education that you, you can receive in the state of Nevada. So my name is Laura Jewell, and I'm the transfer admission counselor for the Office of Undergraduate Admissions at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And I'm going to start sharing my screen and present for you opportunities that you could find if you join us at UNLV. So UNLV, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, a place like no um, other. So why am I saying it's a place like no other? Um, is because we are different, daring, and diverse. This is our slogan. Um, you know, I've been with UNLV for over 15 years and I could see the great um, achievements, developments, um, and innovations that UNLV um, went through. One of them, um, you know, is their diverse um, community, not only students, but um, also faculty and staff. Um, another great achievement is um, through their academics. So we do have 10 academic colleges. They're ranked nationally and internationally. To give you an example, and you most probably know that already, but um, our school is um, internationally ranked for the hospitality program. So we are um, uh, currently number one in the US and number two in the world. So if you're interested in the hospitality program, this is a um, great program to study um, hospitality here at UNLV. We do offer over 300 um, undergraduate and graduate majors, anything and everything that you could um, think about. Um, as an example, one of the unique majors that we are um, offering and is not offered throughout the US and very many other institutions is entertainment engineering within our College of Engineering. Um, so if you're interested you know, in, in um, putting up shows or even working on the Las Vegas Strip, entertainment engineering is a great uh, major to study uh, at UNLV. We are considered a tier one research institution and we are one of the top most diverse universities um, in the country. Um, that's exactly why we have um, a lot of opportunities and experience that we can offer, even for you transferring from other institutions here at UNLV. You may think, oh, I'm a transfer student. Um, I'm not gonna have the same opportunities as a first year um, applicant and so on. No, not um, with our university. We have um, great offers for our undergraduate students and our transfer population as well. We have an undergraduate research office. So if you're interested in um, researching, if you really um, are interested in a, in a class, in a particular course, um, and then you uh, bond with your faculty, your professor, okay, um, and then you are thinking to research something, um, you can pair with them and you can go through our undergraduate research um, office and they will help um, you with resources as well as um, travel funding if you are to go and travel with your faculty member um, to a conference um, or in another state in the country. We do offer undergraduate internship opportunities as well. 
Um, and not only in the hospitality industry, you may think, oh, you know, only College of Hospitality, they have these opportunities. No, they have their own career and internship office. Uh, however, we do offer undergraduate internship opportunities um, all through um, the degrees offered at UNLV. Um, we do have a great study abroad program. Why I like to talk about it is because UNLV not only sends um, their interested students um, to great cities around the world. Um, we do want you to incorporate in um, the country and the culture that you want um, you know, to visit and to learn about. So we have opportunities for you to travel to little villages in France or little cities um, you know, in other countries around the world and actually blend in with um, the local population and learn the language, um, you know, speak it. Um, we do have club and organizations, plenty of those, over 400 of them, anything and everything that you can think about. If you don't like any of them, you can create your own. All you need is five other um, or four or five other students and a faculty or staff member, and then you can create your own organization. So moving on. Um, we do also offer great academic support, and I could go on and on about this, but you know, we don't have the time here. Um, what I particularly like to talk about are the first two um, written on the screen, the Academic Success Center, Center and Academic Advisor, uh, Advising Center. So obviously academic advising is very, very important for all student population, but is even more important for you coming in as a transfer student. I do recommend, strongly recommend actually, to visit your academic advisor anywhere you go. You don't have to go to UNLV, even if you go anywhere else you know, in this country. Um, visit your academic advisor at least one time a semester. You are coming in as a transfer student and you are, have credits that have transferred from other institutions that can count towards your degree. Um, so it's very, very important to meet that academic advisor at least one time a semester. Now, the Academic Success Center, um, why I like to talk about it is because it offers great um, academic support for um, UNLV current students. Um, not only that they are one of our 10 um, academic advising centers, they do advise um, undeclared majors, so exploring major students, but they also provide mentorship programs, tutoring, um, and, um, you know, transition to, into the academic world at UNLV programs. So um, I would say if you are interested in attending UNLV, you are admitted, seek out the Academic Success Center, um, and you will um, have a smooth transition into UNLV. Now let's get into the um, really core, you know, of the, the things here. So, you know, I talked to you a little bit about UNLV, you may think, okay, so I, I'm thinking to come here, but what are the admission requirements? So really quick, um, the general admission requirements for all transfer students um, are a 2.5 GPA with at least 24 transferable courses. Students that have fewer than 24 transferable courses will have to provide high school um, credentials for evaluation purposes. Now, specifically for NC transfer students, so students that are transferring from um, a two-year community college within the state of Nevada, if you have uh, received an associate um, degree business or sciences uh, from one or guaranteed admission into UNLV, even if your GPA is under 2.5. For our international population, if we have any with us today, we do require an ACES evaluation um, if you have attended a non-US college, and that ACES should have a 2.5 GPA with the, the 24 transferable credits. And we also require proof of English um, proficiency if um, you are coming from a non-English speaking country. If you are an international student, um, I do have the, a link to our international admissions at the bottom of this um, slide. Now, transferable credits. I did talk about those transferable credits. What do they mean? Um, college credit coursework that is coming from originally accredited um, institution, a two or four year institution, um, and courses that are non-remedial and non-vocational um, will transfer to UNLV. So remedial course would be intermediate algebra, you know, math 095 and so. Um, small example of um, 
vocational course will be EMT courses. Those will not transfer to UNLV. So academic level coursework will. Um, classes that repeat, they are a repeat at the same institution, um, will the first attempt is excluded from the GPA and the credit. So let's say you took Math 124 um, in the spring of 2019, and then you got an F and then you retook it in the fall of 2019 and then you got an A. So that F is excluded from um, your grade, um, your GPA and the grade is excluded from the calculation of that admission GPA. Um, transferology, it is indeed a great resource for our prospective students that are interested in attending um, UNLV. Um, so before you even apply, you can log on to transferology, create a free account, and plug in your coursework, see how it transfers to UNLV. Um, for our NC transfer um, students, we, um, those that have an associate degree, as I said, you know, they have some benefits, but um, another great benefit is that we waive your lower division general education requirements here at UNLV. What does that mean? Is that you have received an associate degree, um, CSN, TNCC, wherever it is within the state, um, of Nevada, and um, you can come into UNLV and spend about two years or so and focusing on your uh, major courses. So your strictly upper division degree coursework, um, unless you need prerequisites for those um, that belong to the degree. But that is a conversation we have with that academic advisor I mentioned earlier. Now for California transfers, if um, any of you are present here, if you have an IGET or breadth certification, we waive your general education requirements. So kind of the same as an associate from a, from a Nevada institution, with the exception of um, the Nevada Constitution course for the IGET certification. And if you have a breadth certification, you have not completed English 102, you will have to complete that as well here at UNLV. Nevada Constitution is a unique uh, gen ed requirement for all Nevada institutions in order to graduate with a degree, being an associate or a bachelor's degree. So moving on to how do you pay for college and how much does it cost to attend UNLV? So those rates, um, annual rates, um, they are on the screen are based on um, a student that is um, enrolled in at least 15 credits per semester. So the annual tuition and fees for an in-state student is about $8,600, so about um, $4,300 $4, per semester. Um, and then for out-of-state would be 20, a little bit over $24,000, so about $12,000 a semester. Um, you know, in-state is, I guess it's manageable out-of-state. You may think, ooh, it's expensive. What am I gonna do? So you do have, um, you know, as you can see on the screen, about 70% of our student population receives some kind of financial aid um, support. So either being FAFSA or alternate need form, if you're a DACA immigrant or international student, or departmental scholarships, or even employment on campus. Um, whatever is left, maybe you have all of these, and then you have some kind of tuition left, or maybe you don't, you choose to pay out of pocket. Um, you know, we do have tuition plans um, available. So now, as I said, you know, our, um, our annual tuition and fee for out of state um, versus in state. For those of you that graduated from a Nevada high school, you most probably know already if you qualified for the Millennium Scholarship, your, um, your high school counselor most probably told you your senior year. Let's say you went out of state, okay? Um, or you're transferring from somewhere else in state. So for Millennium Scholarship, if you graduated within um, six, the past six years, you can actually contact the Nevada Treasurer's Office and activate that scholarship or simply tell them, oh, I'm, um, you know, I'm going from a two-year community college to UNLV um, and so on. And then um, Nevada Treasurer's Office um, will be able to um, contact your financial aid office and um, um, kind of pour in the fund for you. Um, regional scholarships. So we do offer two regional scholarships. Um, one is the Western Undergraduate Exchange Scholarship that is offered for our population that is coming from the West Coast, those um, states that are marked in red color on the map here. So what does that mean? That kind of cuts tuition in half. So you'll have, um, you'll pay about $6,000 
per semester instead of $12,000 if you qualify for this scholarship. So this scholarship, um, you don't have to apply for it. You just have to apply for FAFSA. So for the federal um, financial aid, free federal financial aid, even if you don't qualify for free money, okay? Then you may think, oh no, um, you know, my family makes too much money. All I'm gonna get is loans. Um, you don't have to accept these loans. You just have to apply for FAFSA in order to be eligible to qualify for this regional scholarship. And you have to have a certain GPA in those transferable credits. So you have to have a 3.0 GPA um, up to 90 transferable credits um, to UNLV to be eligible to qualify for this regional scholarship that is only offered for fall um, applicants. And the same thing goes with the Rebel Challenge Scholarship. So that would award about $9,000 annually and um, the eligibility um, criteria is the same as the one for the WUI scholarship. And um, this scholarship is offered for qualifying students that are coming from the East Coast. Um, that scholarship is also offered for qualifying international um, immigrants um, and um, DACA students um, as well, after you have applied for or submitted the alternate need form. So with that being said, um, I kind of came to the end of this really quick, fast you know, presentation. Um, so you can, if you're interested in applying to UNLV, our application for fall of 2021 is still open. The application submission deadline is July 1st. So you can still apply right now, just go um, you know, on the UNLV website um, and just put in, you know, in the magnifying glass, you literally put in transferring to UNLV. You can go to the page find out uh, more of the information that I just presented here and start your application. You have to submit all official college transcripts to UNLV admissions electronically or, electronically or regular mail. Um, and um, um, it's recommended NC to NC electronic request um, from CSN and other um, NC institutions. Um, it's recommended versus um, regular mail just because it uploads directly into our system and it's free of charge. So with that being said, I did come to the end of this presentation. Um, thank you for being here again. As I said, I'm the only transfer admission counselor at this point in time. So you being out of state or in state doesn't matter. You still contact me. This is my um, information on the screen here, or you can contact the general transfer email. Um, I also recommend that you um, visit our um, virtual event calendar we do we did start our summer transition programs really great to learn more about UNLV and see if that is the uh, best school for you to attend thank you so much and now I'm going to pass it on to my colleague from um, University of Nevada Reno thank you Laura um, some of the information will, will kind of be redundant, but some unique um, considering the different universities in the state of Nevada. So um, let me start sharing my screen. Hopefully this works. Can we see it? Yeah, okay, all right. All right, so thank you for being here um, tonight. And I first wanna start out with introducing you to our transfer team. I, my name is Carrie M and I'm director of transfer recruitment. And I also have Kayla Freeman, who is a transfer specialist. Um, she too was a transfer student as well as myself. So we both understand some of the issues that transfer students go through. We do meet um, with students one-on-one. -on -one. You can do that through our online scheduler or we have, uh, we have monthly webinars for students from California, Nevada, um, and across the, the United States. So you are able to also attend one of those. So what do you wanna know about University of Nevada? Well, first of all, we were created in 1874. <clears throat> we were the first university to be established in the state of Nevada. We are considered the flagship of Nevada University. We have over 150 different programs and we just got recognition for all of our engineering programs being nationally, um, nationally ranked. So that was a great accomplishment for us as well as a new College of Engineering building that we just built this last fall. 
We have approximately 21,000 students, and this is including graduate students. Um, we are ranked tier one by US News and World Report. And what that means is that we're ranked in the top 200 universities in the nation. And we get that ranking by alumni giving back to the university, retention rates, graduation rates, um, a lot of different things that go into that ranking. So we're very proud of that. We also just received the Carnegie ranked one research institution, which is at the highest level of research um, throughout the nation and, and throughout university. So we're very proud of that as well. We have a study abroad building um, on our campus for one-on-one -on -one advising. That study abroad um, building, actually students from other universities go through our study abroad program because we have an actual advisors that are there to help students and guide them. I actually got my passport there before. So um, it's a really cool building. It's brand new as well on our campus. We have over 250 clubs and organizations. So if you like Taco Eating Tuesdays or you like the Physics Club or you like the Pre-Med Club, there's something there for every student. And if we don't have a club for you, uh, you only need 10 students to get that club um, started and, and going. Um, we're Division One Athletics. And lastly, uh, um, we're located in Reno, Nevada, which is located 40 minutes from Lake Tahoe and four hours away from San Francisco. So where should you start as a transfer student? I would suggest going to our website at unr.edu slash transfer. We've worked very hard to revamp this website and keeping the transfer student questions in mind. And so on there, we have admissions requirements, we have transfer agreements. So with a lot of schools, we have transfer agreements that give you a roadmap um, to let you know what classes you can take that would go towards your degree with us. And they're very useful. We have tuition costs, uh, we have financial aid and scholarships. And then we have also the transferology website which allows um, students to be able to bumble, bundle up their classes and see how they transfer. If a course isn't on this transferology table, you can always reach out to us and you can also request through transferology a course evaluation. And so we'll be able to tell you how that course is gonna transfer and then ultimately how it'll be applicable towards your degree. And then lastly, and I'm gonna talk about these later in the PowerPoint, is course, course waivers and lower division course waivers with transferable AA degrees from various states. So what do you need to transfer in? You need 24 transferable credits, okay? What's transferable? Almost everything. Um, as long as you're coming from a school that has um, regional uh, accreditation. The only items that usually do not come in and do not transfer are remedial classes that are not college level, math or English, or vocational technical classes such as fire science, welding, paralegal, medical assistants sometimes do not transfer. So keep that in mind as you're counting up your transferable credits. You need a transferable GPA of a 2.5. If you do have a 2.4, I strongly su suggest still applying. We do have an alternate admissions program that we run students through and have a committee that reviews the transcripts, because we do understand, especially if you took classes 10 years ago and you didn't do very well in those classes, that that isn't the student that you are now. And so keep that in mind if you do have a 2.4 to still apply to the university. And lastly, a transferable associate's degree from a Nevada community college or Nevada system of higher education guarantees you admissions with us. So if you do have that and have maybe a 2.2 GPA, just keep in mind that we do guaranteed admissions if you're coming from a Nevada community college. So tuition, now this tuition is based on 30 credits per year. So our in-state tuition is around seven to 8,000 per year for 30 credits. And then our out-of-state tuition is around 23,000 per year for 30 credits. We do have two scholarship programs, tuition scholarship programs for surrounding states, such as California, Washington, Oregon, uh, Colorado, Idaho. And so keep these in mind because they are a great cost savings for students. And why we call them scholarship programs is because if students come in with a transferable GPA of a 3.0, we take off $12,000 off your out-of-state tuition per year. If you do get the, the Western Undergraduate Exchange, you get it for four years. Most transfers don't need it for four years. 
but you get it for four years and you don't have to maintain that GPA of a 3.0, just good academic standing of a 2.0. So it's a, it's a great scholarship program. You can also, if you have a family emergency or you need to go home for some reason, you can keep this scholarship in place and return it at a later time. The next one is our Nevada Advantage Scholarship. Again, this is for Western states and students that come in with a transferable GPA of a 2.75, we take off 8,000 off their out-of-state tuition per year. Again, if students get this, they get it for four years and they don't have to maintain that GPA of a 2.75, just good academic standing at the university. So both of these scholarship programs are very good for students and they make it way affordable for you to be able to attend an out-of-state um, institution. Um, again, our out-of-state is around 23,000 per year for 30 credits. So we're gonna go into um, how do you apply? So it's pretty easy. I wanna say we're really straightforward. We don't ask for essays. We don't ask for personal statements, which is very nice because I don't wanna to have to read all of them. Um, it's a straightforward process that you go to unr.edu slash apply. Our applications for fall and for spring open mid-September. So you can apply either for fall or spring when that opens. We do have a $60 application fee and that application fee cannot be deferred. It is a processing fee. Um, so if you decide not to come in the semester that you have applied, we'll cancel your app and you'll have to reapply for the semester you do wanna reapply for. The next step is to submit official transcripts from every institution you have attended. Now, this is a big concern right now that I'm having with a lot of students. There's, there's a, what we call a national clearinghouse. And so institutions report students to this national clearinghouse, even sometimes when they haven't attended. And, and, but we can see it and we add it to your application. So please keep an eye on your application because there might be some colleges that reported you to this national um, this national database and we'll have to get those official transcripts or a letter of non enrollment. We would love to have those transcripts come electronically or by email if you can, because a lot of our transfer articulation specialists are still working from home and this just makes it easier for everybody. It gets your get your transcripts into your application so much faster. The next step is to submit ACT, SAT or AP scores. They're not needed for admissions. But if you do have a three or better on your AP score, it does usually count towards your degree or we do give you credits. Um, and the ACT and SAT can be used for placement into college level math and English. But again, they're not needed for admission. So if you did not take any of these tests, do not worry about it. And then the last step we need is immunization records. We need proof that you've had two doses of a measles, mumps and rubella and one dose of a tetanus diphtheria within the last 10 years. And so most of the time, most students have had the MMRs. It's the tetanus that has expired and usually has to be retaken. So fall deadlines, the application and transcripts are due by July 1st. We are willing to work with students. I've, I've worked with a lot of students this last fall where the colleges just, it was taking them a lot longer to send the transcripts. So please reach out to us if that happens to you. Also, um, another thing with the transcripts, a lot of colleges are closing. And so students aren't able to get their college transcripts. So again, work with us and, and let us know and we're, we're able to um, help you out with that. Our scholarship deadline is February 1st, as well as our financial aid. So this is one big thing to remember. You really wanna apply and be admitted by February 1st. We do not um, process your financial aid packages until you are admitted. So it's really, really important to make sure that you're admitted. And then the last thing is to make an appointment with an academic advisor in March and be ready to register for classes in April. So we have a decentralized model of academic advising. We don't have a centralized advising center. Our advisors are within each college. So if you are an engineering student, your academic advisor will be in the College of Engineering. And within each college, there's around four to five different advisors you can book an appointment with. You can even book an appointment with them, even prospective transfers. So if you do have any questions about how classes go into your degree, you're always able to reach out to them. Our spring deadline is we would like the application due by December 15th. 
Um, we do offer WUI and Nevada Advantage during spring, but we don't offer any other scholarships during spring. Uh, the financial aid, you just want to make sure that you transition it over, add us to your FAFSA, and make sure that you close out your financial aid at your current college. Um, we would like transcripts to be submitted by January 5th. Again, if you're on a quarter system or you're taking a winter semester, please reach out to us. We are willing to make exceptions um, when a student is going through this process. And then make an appointment with an academic advisor in October and be ready to register in November. Um, this is a big one because remember that application opens mid-September. And so you have September to get admitted, October to meet with your academic advisor and ready to register in November. So it's a very quick, quick um, turnaround in the spring transfers, but it's, it's doable. But just keep those, um, you have about three months to get everything going for you. So we have a lot of different transfer pathways. Of course, I talked about the Nevada system of higher education that um, we do accept their AAs, it guarantees admissions, and it also waives lower division core. Um, we also take the transferable uh, associates degrees from Washington, Oregon, and Texas. So if you do are coming from those states, those will also waive your lower division core if you have a transferable AA with them. Um, California is also in that mix. Um, in addition to California's transferable AAs or um, associates, we do accept the IGETSI and the CSU breath. So those will um, also waive lower division core and they work better with some degrees other than others. So um, don't always think it's guaranteed that it, your lower division is gonna be um, fulfilled. But if you're a business major or a liberal arts major, they work really well with those, with those type of degrees. Again, you do, you do have to take certain classes like the Nevada Constitution to, to receive those waivers. So items to think about as I'm working with students, especially from different areas is the average cost for a tier one school like us is around 34,000 per year. Again, our out of state is 23,000 per year. For the caliber of type of school we are, we're still way more affordable than most universities and colleges. You can graduate in two years. Most transfer students, that is my goal, is to get you graduated in two years. And you can find classes. Um, so, you know, there are some universities and colleges right now that are impacted and where students are having a hard time finding classes. And at University of Nevada, Reno, this is not the case. You are able to um, find your classes. You can even take up a, to a credit load of 21 credits, even if you wanted to go into summer. We have an amazing summer schedule. You can actually get your full business administration minor in the summer. Um, so the, there's a lot of classes offered in the summer for students. Um, the other thing is, I, I put this on here because nobody told me about this, um, being a native Nevadan from a small rural town in Nevada, is that you can receive multiple degrees or second bachelor. Some universities and colleges will not allow you to do that, but at University of Nevada, Reno, we, we will allow you to do that. So if you are thinking of coming back for, I'm having a lot of second bachelors coming back for nursing, our post back nursing program, or coming back for an engineering degree, um, you can do that with us. Or you can also, you know, get two degrees. So you can have a, um, you can have a psychology and a criminal justice degree. And you can come out with both of those degrees. It takes you a little bit longer, but you are able to do that. And then again, we're Carnegie ranked one research institute, the highest research level possible, which is comparable to a UC in California. And, you know, the, just compare the cost if you're looking at a UC in California versus um, even an out of state school such as us at the same caliber that you would have got um, staying in California or in your, your current state. So, so those are just things to think about and ask questions about because you don't wanna to get to a school and then be very surprised about it. The other thing is come visit us, we're open. We're open for visitors and we want you to come see our campus because if you can see a little bit of behind me, we have one of, I think, one of the most beautiful campuses in the nation. And that's not even coming from me, it's coming from other people, parents, students. And so if you can come visit and, and feel yourself on our campus, then this is where you need to be. And so we really want you to come visit. Right now, I wouldn't come visit right now. We're in the middle of commencement, in-person commencement. So um, 
But, you know, starting next week, I would try to come and visit our campus and, and get a tour. And you can do that by visiting our unr.edu slash visit. So with that, if there's any other questions, I do have an alternate email on here. Again, there's two of us. So, um, you know, if you don't get any answers or you need to get answers right away, it's always good to email admissions at unr.edu. So with that, I am done. I'm not sure if there's any questions in the chat. So one of the questions was if we are both semester system. So I did take the liberty to answer that. Obviously, you know, we are both semester um, system schools. You're on mute. Kerry, we can't hear you. Sorry. Um, <laughs> there was a question in there about the GPA when you were presenting, Laura. So, but I don't see it there anymore. So but. I answered that. I thought it was addressed to me. That's why I answered. So okay. the question was, um, what is the average GPA for transfer students? So I did answer for UNLV. I, I did say for UNLV only um, it's 2.5 uh, with at least 24 transferable um, credits. Mm -hmm. And ours is two. We just have an alternate um, emissions path with that 2.4. And our average transfer GPA that comes in is about a 3.3. So our students are coming in with pretty, pretty high um, GPAs coming into the university. So to add um, to that, because <laughs> you just mentioned alternate um, criteria, we do have an alternate criteria, which is the Faculty Senate Appeals Committee. Um, and we do have, we do work with um, students, um, you know, case by case, and we do admit around that 2.3 five um, gap and around the 24 transferable credits. You know, if someone has 22 transferable credits, um, let's say at a 2.45 GPA, we will work with them. We will conditionally um, admit them. Um, at this point in time, you reach out to me and you start working with me directly. And then, you know, we, um, I will work with um, our processing team on that. And that's for UNLV. Oh, we have a question. Okay, so the, I'm going to read the question out loud. Um, you can, I don't know if you can answer for <laughs> your <laughs> institution. Um, so, okay, so medical school for um, both of us. Um, if there is a preference that the students get their undergraduate from the schools. Um, does that enhance the chances of getting into the, the um, medical schools? So I'll let you go first. Yours is old, okay. right? All right. <laughs> They're longer uh, than ours. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I can never guarantee uh, going to our, our university is going to get you into our medical school. But one thing you can do when you're here is you can build those relationships. So a lot of the professors in our sciences have very close relationships with our medical school. We also have a pre-professional advisor that helps you in guiding you into our medical school or any med medical school for that, for that matter. So not that I, I want to say, yeah, you, you're guaranteed and yeah, um, you know, going to get into our medical school. I do, however, think that you can build those relationships even in your undergrad that maybe you wouldn't be able to do at different colleges. And then that pre-professional advising is so important because you need to make sure you're taking the right classes and you need to be prepared for the MCAT, right? And, and that type of um, stuff. So, so that's um, my answer to that question. As far as UNLV goes, um, just want to say that our medical school is fairly new. Um, it's kind of our, you know, pride and joy here at UNLV. Um, 
we just celebrated our charter um, class graduating from the um, uh, Kirk Kirk Korean Kirk Kirk Korean. Oh my gosh, my accent. <laughs> you know, medical school. Um, so the UNLV Medical School. Um, you know, this first class. Um, they were. They got in and they they were. Um, their tuition was free. You know, it was all paid for. So it was a fantastic thing for UNLV. It was really innovative. You know what they've done. So, um, you know, with that being said, I would say. Uh, I don't really know much about the medical school, but as Carrie was mentioning with UNR, I would say that with UNLV and any other undergraduate um, program, you know, or under students that go through the undergraduate program that are thinking to continue going to medical school would kind of be the same um, thing. I don't think um, any of our schools, if I'm that correct, Carrie, I don't think any of our medical schools will take precedence over, um, you know, an undergraduate student from um, the university. Um, I think what they're looking for is, you know, a good essay, a good interview, good um, MCAT scores, um, good GPA, and, and that um, pre-professional, um, um, what I said, the pre-professional, the, the sheet, you know, like with all the <laughs> requirements to get in medical school, um, I would say make sure that you know you don't repeat very many courses, especially the ones that um, you need to um, or the medical schools are looking at. Um, make sure you have a lot of extracurriculum activity, a lot of involvement. Um, and I talk um, about that. I know that just because I do have one of our rebel recruiters, you know, uh, and, um, and um, a student employee in the office of admissions, a tour guide, actually, you know, she's getting ready to graduate and apply to um, different medical schools. Obviously, UNLV is one of them, but she is applying to different ones. She doesn't have her hopes up that UNLV medical school will be the one to accept her, you know, so um, learning from her, that's, uh, you know, obviously she's, she's worked very hard um, she did go through pre-professional advising. We do have that here at UNLV as well. And she went um, through her sciences advising a bunch of times a semester, not only one time, several times a semester. Calculates, recalculates that science GPA of hers, <laughs> make sure um, that she didn't miss anything and a, a lot, a lot of involvement. I um, you know clubs um, and organizations, um, you know, the sciences related, a lot of internship, undergraduate research, she's even published, you know, so just look for that if you're interested in going to a medical school. Awesome, well, thank you both so much for sharing. We're running out of time. So um, students, if you have additional questions, they will share their contact information, feel free to reach out directly to them after. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you learned some helpful information that will help with your college search. Um, when you close the Zoom window, there will be a very quick four question survey. If you don't mind completing that for us, we'd really appreciate any feedback that you have. And then like I said at the beginning, don't forget there are more sessions happening right after this. So be sure to check that StriveScan website, sign up for any additional sessions you might be interested in, and we will see you soon. So thanks again for being here. Have a great evening, and we'll see you in the next session. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.